Welcome back to the Guns and Outdoors channel. I hope you're really doing well out there. Hey, if you've recently been looking at any of the small subcompact pistols, or historically, if you've ever looked at mouse guns, pocket pistols, ankle carry, any of that, then you're going to find this video very interesting and for you. Kindly, if you would, put your trigger finger on the like and subscribe button down below and go ahead and execute a smooth, consistent trigger pull right to the rear. In this video, we're going to go back old school. We're going to take a fresh look at Beretta USA's model, the Minx. Man, it's going to be awesome. Stand by. back let's have a look at the Beretta USA model 950 BS chambered in 22 short let's take it out of the original box don't have the packaging but the original box is so cool very nostalgic very historic here as we set it up let's get the box out of the way and then we're gonna put it on the table and zoom in all right let's talk about the Beretta get it propped up here for us these days, if you do your research, it's a lot of micro subcompact pistols. We'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge history that it's been done before, right? What's old is new. This design, this came out literally just after World War II. So if you do the math on that, we're looking at over 70 years. So here we go. One of the most tiny, smallest, excellent form factor models of a pistol that we've had. And if you look at it, it's timeless. Today, we would look at edges, sharp edges, rounded corners and certain features that we would expect or want in our firearms if we're gonna carry them on a daily basis to make us feel comfortable. And sure enough, that's what this guy has, a lot of rounded edges, just look at it. Now, hang tight, we are gonna go out to the range and shoot it. I have already shot this previously with the owner and we had a good old time, but I'm gonna take it out. We're gonna run and gun it and give the Beretta a go here in a minute. But first things first, let's get something out of the way. Let's talk about the 22 short. All right, set the record straight, clear the table. Clear the table. We all know that there are much more effective and efficient rounds out there these days. Of course, nine millimeter, 45, 10 millimeter, 380, the gamut. All right, we're talking about 22 short. <laughs> we haven't even made it to 22 long rifle yet. What I wanted to tell you from a history perspective is let's go all the way back to the year 1857. That's right. That's when this 22 short rimfire was created. And it was created for the very first Smith & Wesson revolver. And it was also the very first American metallic cartridge. About 20-something uh, mm, years later, the 22 LR round came out. But this guy was the first for us. One of the first. Pretty awesome, right? These days, you're still going to see small mouse guns that have this round in it. And it's for your plinkers, your weekend. This classification of a pistol is for backups. This chambering isn't recommended, obviously. All right. So clear the table, got that out of the way. Still fun to shoot, still fun to own. Specifications. With a length of 4.7, a height of 3.4, and a barrel length of 2.4 inches. This is a very, very compact gun. Just under, with a weight of 10 ounces, approximately at 9.8. Definitely got that super light, comfortable feeling. When we look at round count capacity, 22 short, we're gonna be at six plus one in that, and I believe it's eight plus one in the 25 ACP. Comment down below if I got anything wrong on that. The 950 was a post-World War II gun. The Jetfire and this guy, the Minx, and you can see the giveaway, the Telltale 6 selector switch, came a little later. But the original 950, you'd carry in the cocked and locked in the half-cocked position. This one, they had a little extra. You still do half cock, and you still have the safety selector switch. Like anything with gun control, how did we get here? We They put a ban. There was a Gun Control Act of 1968. We seem to go through this every now and then. We hopefully get to the point one day where we don't have to continue to deal with this. How do you get around that ban where we couldn't import these from Italy? Well, you invest in country. So that's exactly what Beretta did. From the 1970s onward, they made a plant up in Maryland where these particular models were continued to be made from upwards to a rock approximately 2003. The plant located that Beretta had was in Akakeek, Maryland. So when my stepdad transferred from FN Manufacturing in South Carolina, we all hightailed up to Maryland, area where the plant is. My stepdad was actually the plant manager. So I love doing Beretta reviews, very nostalgic for me. This is, this is home. 
All right, can't hate on a Beretta. All firearms have pros and cons, and you know, Beretta factory was always a pleasure to go visit as a kid. Really enjoyed that. Back to this 950 Bravo Sierra. This guy is easy to shoot, easy to carry, has so many great attributes. Really appreciative to the person that loaned this gun to the channel for today's review. If you have any pistols that you're interested in having us review, just reach out to us on the gram or hit me on the Guns and Outdoors channel email address at gmail.com or reach out via the YouTube page and we'll get connected up. All right, lightweight, low profile, great ergos, easy to conceal, no brainer. Let's click a quick look. Plastic Beretta grips with their awesome logo, 22 short, back strap, smooth. Very traditional, not atypical of older style pistols. Right, that was a later, later enhancement to add texture and grips and get into that and really customize and make a gun experience be perfect and unique to individual shooters and cater to the needs. But what you can see here is the magazine safety release is on the left hand side in the lower the heel part. All right. It uh, ejects just fine. It's not necessarily high speed, low drag, but uh, that was a, but definitely nice. You have that classic Beretta feel. The frame is aluminum alloy. The slide is carbon steel. Feels really good in the hand. It really does. External hammer, great trigger. Have a look at that trigger guard. It's a stamped, not a typical uh, mass produced guns. It was a, a technique. Instead of having to mill all out, they could, you know, helped with the build process, but to do stamped, but not bad at all. Get my finger in there, pretty easy. And in addition to the safety, this is our tip up barrel. So what you would do is you would just push this away from you. So the controls, everything's accessible in the controls. So tip it away, you can see the barrel tip up. Now, if you're gonna disassemble this, I'll do it very quickly. It is kind of tricky, but you would bring this forward. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and then kind of an up. So I will single action this, take it back. And then up, all right? Do your cleaning, do your disassembly, do your maintenance. It's pretty, pretty basic. Barrel stays fixed, it's pinned in. And if we were gonna reassemble, we wanna catch these two slide catches here. Now what I notice is, and I'll get a little nervous, is there are these springs here, and I get afraid that the spring is gonna break this grip. I'm trying to, when I line this up, the idea is you wanna put pressure downward and then forward. So you may not get the best view, but I'm trying to make sure I can get everything sorted. Down and forward, up, let me try one more time. I got one side, let's try this again. Okay, let me get it set up. Push it with my man hands this time, down and forward. There we go, so, <laughs> man hands. And you're rocking and rolling. All right, originally made in Italy, Brazil, and then as we already spoke about, United States, make it um, manufactured in country. There you go, if you're a collector, get one of each. Design, timeless, 70 years old. Even made to this day, just in new named models, higher chamberings and calibers, as we spoke about previously as well. But overall, the exact form factor, the look and the form, almost 99% the same. Produced from 1950 and discontinued on this particular one, the Minx, in 2003. It's a blowback design pistol, single action with the hammer. It has a simple takedown that I just showed you, and we already talked about the frame. So very good strong little frame but with a 22 short or virtually any kick easy to control very reliable if there's nothing else for me to say at the moment let's get ready to go hit the range have some fun get our pew pew on okay we're at the range got the beretta ready to put it on a full-size silhouette target it should be quite fun winchester super x22 short and what i got a kick out of it's his old stash ammo i don't know if you guys can see that a dollar 53 <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? I've got a nice full-size silhouette target. Let's send it out to 21 feet. All right, let's put on our eyes and ears. 
six in the mag. We're gonna go ahead and put one in the chamber. I don't wanna get slide by, so I'm gonna modify my grip. hardly any any kick on that. All right. There you go. A little outside of the egg. Felt like a cap gun or a BB gun. We'll send it back out. Cool. I'm happy with that. Let's take it or look at a little grouping. <laughs> well, you know, we're in the heart of the bad guy, so I'm happy with that. All right, let's just give it one more go. This is definitely awesome for plinking. Simple as that. Single action. There's your Beretta Minx Model 950. What a great, small, little fun package and a, just a fun plinking everyday shooter. Now, obviously, I won't recommend this as your primary carry. Make sure you're trying a different cartridge, different configuration for that because this is the rim fire. We all know how these guys are. I did not have any hang fires or anything like that. I did have some second shots that I needed to do it to get the cartridge to go boom. Also ran into a couple of failure to not extract, but to eject the empty shell casings. Particularly they manifested when I was trying off camera some of the CCI subsonic 710 feet per second. What's exacerbated on this particular model is there's no extractor. So as the slide reciprocates back, you're using the energy from the fired round to eject the shell. And with the subsonic, that's not enough. So I would have to go in and use a plastic piece or a wooden dowel to get the cement casing out of there. All in all, pretty good. Hey, this is a Beretta and a piece of history. They are available on secondary market. If you can find one, I definitely recommend it. They're really nice. You just can't help but to like this little guy. As always, like and subscribe to the channel. Take care of yourselves, and we're out of here. See ya.